Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And as you're turning there, two men were talking. One man said to the other, he said, I tried to organize a professional hide-and-seek tournament. He said, but it was a complete failure. The other man said, why did it fail? The man said, you know, good hide-and-seek players, they're hard to find. Hard to find, Harley. What do you call someone who has no body and no nose? Truth is, nobody knows. Nobody knows, Harley. Amen. So it is Father's Day, and uh, came across some, some really nice quotes that have been handed down through the years. Um, a gentleman named Clarence Kellen, he said, Dad, talking about his father, he said, he didn't tell me how to live. He lived, and I watched him do it. Amen? Harmon Killebrew, baseball Hall of Famer, baseball great. He said, my father used to play with me and my brother in the yard. Mother would call out, you're tearing up the grass. Dad would reply, we're not raising grass, we're raising boys. A proverb says, a dad carries pictures where he once carried his money. Another proverb said, every father needs to remember that one day his children will follow his example and not his advice. So true. Amen. So true. Today I want to talk about training up our children, training up our children. I believe that all the dads that are here today wanted to be and, and absolutely have tried to be a good dad. Amen? I believe that. We tried to do our best, the best job that we could, and, and hopefully we never use the dads on TV as a role model. Amen? <laughs> you know, like the, uh, the, the Al Bundys, the Fred Costanzas, the Homer Simpsons, these are the the TV dads that are out there to, to give us examples, hopefully we didn't follow their, uh, their lead. But I also believe that many dads today struggle with sacrificing their, their personal time, sacrificing you know, the time they used to spend on, the, on their hobbies, the things that they like to do, and, and sacrificing uh, that time with, their, with spending uh, time with, with their children and, and their family. And when they do make that time for their children, a lot of times they find themselves saying, now what? They have no idea what to do with alone time with their children. Oftentimes they end up asking, what do you want to do? So what's the problem with that, with that question? Problem is that that's not leadership, amen? That's not a dad leading and guiding their children. As dads, we try to work hard, we try to provide for our family, and much too often we end up providing too much today, don't we? We end up providing too much today, and we end up, you know, spoiling our kids. We haven't taught them the importance of a hard day's work. Many times we find that we've patterned ourselves after our own dad, don't we? You know, the things that used to drive us nuts when... Dad would say to us, we end up saying what? Same thing to our kids. Amen. But how many of us have truly taken the time to read about the expert father? The perfect father. How many of us have taken the time to look into his book, our heavenly father's book, and seek his guidance on how to be a good dad? Amen. Let's look in Ephesians chapter 6 this morning, starting right at verse 1. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, 
but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Amen. As I said before, as dads, as parents, we, we want the best for our children. You know, we want them to, to grow up and be productive. We want them to, to grow up and be successful. But as I touched on last week, we need to be careful not to model that success that we want for our children, not to model that success after the, sets, after the success of the world. Amen? We need, to, we need for them to be successful in the Lord. And our job is to lead them and to guide them to be successful in the Lord. We are to bring them up and train them for eternity. Amen? That is our number one priority as a, as a mom and dad. We are to bring them up, and we are to train them for eternity. Amen? Now, I want to dig a little bit deeper, and I want to really focus on verse 4 of the Scripture that we just read in Ephesians 6. Verse 4, again, says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So God is directing dads. In two ways here. In this verse, he's given us two directions to really focus on with our children. Number one, he says, for that we are not to provoke our children to wrath. Do not provoke our children to wrath. Now, I'm sure many of you have probably misinterpreted this verse throughout the years, as, as I once did. What God is saying here, we really have to understand and we have to dig in. To, to the words that he's using here. That word provoke in the original Greek is the word paragizos, and it means extreme passion or extreme emotion. And I want to emphasize on the word extreme. It's talking about extreme emotions. So dads, we are not to show extreme emotions towards your children not to provoke them to wrath. What is God telling us here? Well, it's a twofold direction. It's a twofold direction. God is telling us that we are not to show extreme emotions, wrath, anger, towards our children. And secondly, the second part of that is that we are not to show or display extreme emotions, wrath or anger, around our children. Amen? That's exactly what God is telling us here. We are not to show extreme emotion toward our children's extreme anger or wrath, and we're not to display it around them. Bottom line, God is telling us, dads, we are to always be in control. We are to be level-headed, control our emotions, and not fly off the handle. We are to have emotional self-control. Amen? It's a good thing my kids don't come with me to work while I'm driving. Amen? You know, road rage. How many times do we see somebody do something and, and we just fly off the handle? That's not being in control of our emotions. And we have to be especially careful if we're around our children or around children in general. That will provoke them to do the same. And that's exactly what God is warning us here. Do not provoke our children to wrath. Second part. He says that we are to bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So this verse is no different from the rest of the Bible. There is nothing coincidental in all of God's word. Amen. There is not one word that's coincidental. God is very specific at the use of words, and his use of the word training here is no different. It's not coincidental. In fact, the word training here is fundamental to what God is explaining and what God is teaching and what God is telling us here. Think about an athlete in training. Think about a, 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 a young soldier in boot camp, and they're in, in boot camp training. They will all tell you the same thing, that the most important part of their training is discipline. Amen? 
That athlete may be training for the Olympics. They have to discipline themselves to get up early every single day and do their training and, and train hard. That soldier in boot camp, he will tell you that's the job of that drill sergeant, isn't it? To put discipline into their training, to put discipline into their life. Discipline is what helps them stay focused and and stay on task. And the same is true with our children. God is telling us that we are to train up our children. And part of that training is what? It's discipline. We cannot overlook the need for discipline when we train up our children. So this verse is telling us that we are to, to bring up, we are to raise our children in the training or the discipline of the Lord. Amen? The training or the discipline of the Lord. Second thing it's telling us that we are to bring them up also in the admonition of the Lord. Now, admonition is not a word that we use very often, and it simply means warning. To admonish means you warn somebody. Amen? Amen? Admonition means that we are to bring them up in the warning of the Lord. The Bible is full of warnings, isn't it? Matter of fact, in the the pieces of Scripture, the verses that we read before verse 4, verses 1 and 2, what does it say? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. We get the command. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. And now we get the warning. If we do that, it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. What is the warning in that? If we don't do it, what happens? It's not going to be well with us. And our lives may very well be shortened for disobedience. Amen? The Bible is full from Genesis to Revelation of God's warnings to us. Now, we need to also understand that these are not warnings of, you know, do this or else. You don't find that here. Amen? It's not those type of warnings. When God warns, he's saying, if you do this, then this will be the result. Amen? They're warnings to help us. There are warnings to benefit us. There are warnings to keep us out of harm's way. We have to understand when God says, don't do that, he's saying, I don't want you to get hurt. Amen? Every time that God says that, it's for our benefit. It's to to keep us out of harm's way. So dads, to, to sum up what we're reading here in Ephesians 6. We are to model emotional self-control at all times. Amen? We're to model that emotional self-control on our children. We're to model that emotional self-control around our children. We're to stay in control. And we are to correct. We are, we are to discipline. We're to warn them. According to God's word. Amen. Now there's no doubt that God gives us a lot more direction in his word. But I believe with all my heart, if we focus just on verse 4 here as dads, all the other stuff will fall into place. Amen. Model self-control. Train them up in discipline. Warn them according to God's word, and everything else is going to fall into place. Amen? Now, when we, you know, dads, be honest. You know, sometimes being a parent is, is daunting, isn't it? It seems overwhelming. Especially the first child. You know, there's, there's no dad handbook that says if this happens, you do this, or, you know, to get this result, you do that. You know, there's a lot of opinion books out there, but there's no, you know, one handbook. 
when we look at parenting this way in verse 4, the task doesn't seem as daunting. God is telling us that we don't have to have all the answers. Amen? Praise God for that. We don't have to have all the answers. He's simply instructing us to be in control of our emotions, look to him for the answers, and to teach our children about him from his word. Amen? When I first started, you know, giving speeches at work and having to do public speaking, you know, they always taught you the acronym KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? God is telling us the same thing. Keep it simple. Don't be stupid. Amen? It's that simple. So dads, where do we stand on all this? Have we been standing by and just just watching in silence? Do we allow our children to set their own standards on what they do, what they watch, where they go, what they listen to? Is it is it too much effort for us to step in and set those boundaries because we just don't want that conflict? That's our obligation, though. Amen? That's what God has called us to do and called us to be. Proverbs 29, verse 15. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Verse 17. Correct your son, and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give you delight in your soul. Amen? We are to discipline our children. We are to warn our children about the consequences of disobeying God, disobeying us, disobeying those in authority. We are to warn them of the consequences of disobedience and living an ungodly life. Amen? But we also have to be careful that we cannot do that as a hypocrite either. Amen? We can't tell them to live a godly life and then we live like Satan, you know, Monday through Saturday. It doesn't work. Our children, we teach them more by them watching us than what we say. Plain and simple. I want to make a side note here as well. Godly discipline is a far cry from abuse. Amen? That is nothing about what God is talking about when he's talking about disciplining our children. Yeah, sometimes they need a a little spanking. Amen? That's what God is talking about, the rod of correction. But it's a far cry from abuse. And unfortunately, this Satan-controlled world gives us way too many examples of abusers. We have to understand that we have to put both parts of verse 4 together when we're talking about discipline. When we discipline, it has to be 100% in self-control. Out of self-control, with self-control. Never correct our children when we're angry. We're full of rage. We should keep those emotions. They should be in check. Amen? Discipline needs to be... Let me give you an example. It's kind of like a child touching a hot stove. Amen? That stove, it's not angry at the child, is it? That stove can't feel any emotion. It has its emotions in check. But it gives that child an immediate response that gets their attention. It lets them know that there are real consequences if they ever try to touch it again. Amen. Our discipline, our teaching, our parenting has to be like that hot stove. 
But discipline has to come from a place of love and godly instruction. Amen? Out of love and godly instruction. I never understood when parents would say, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you before that little spanking. (laughs) Amen? Now I understand it. It's a hard step to take as a parent correct our children, discipline them. But as long as it comes from that place of love and godly instruction, it has to be backed up with the word of God. We're going to instruct them how to live a godly life. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be easy. It is not easy to raise our children to be godly, In a sinful and ungodly world. Amen. It's in direct contradiction to what the world says. To how the world acts. How the world tells you that you should be a parent. Let me tell you something. We have the perfect parent that gives us instructions on how we are to raise up our children. Amen. Plain and simple. We have to understand. We have to realize what is at stake. And what is at stake? Our children's very soul, amen? That's how important it is. Dads, I know this seems like a heavy load. Seems like a huge burden upon your shoulders. We just have to remember that we have to follow God's guidance. We don't have to have all the answers. He already has them all. Amen. It's up to us just to find them. Spend time in his word and let him speak to us and guide us into how to be a better parent, how to be a better dad. You know, when we get to the end of our life, when we're taking our last breath, What is it that we are going to be the most proud of? How many hours we spent at work? How many things we were able to to buy and accumulate over our lifetime? I can tell you right now that every person that I've ever spent in a hospital room As they're taking their last breath, none of those things ever come up. Unless it's in the negative sense. I wish I would have worked less. I wish I would have spent more time instead of buying things. Those are not the things that you're going to be proud of. What you're going to be most proud of is your family. Amen? Your family. And you will never be more proud than to know that they are saved and heaven bound. Amen. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training, the discipline, and the admonition of the Lord.